Hello everybody, it's time once again to do an Axe 7.4 guide. Uh, so the next time you'll probably see the next guide of 7.4.5, all paths, counters, or boss counters uh, video, it's going to be um, probably next week. And the reason for that is just that, well, new content's coming out and, uh, you know, as a lot of as well, you know, on the channel we do, we cover grind guides, so uh, the next time I'm going to be able to do a guide that's a little bit longer, it's going to be a little bit longer to do that. So, uh, these guides will be updated like once every, I don't know, three months, maybe six months is the next time I'll update this, uh, because it does, does mean that, you know, a lot of champions come out to the game, a lot more counters that people didn't put into the community tab, and as well, like, I have to kind of, like, research some of the champions and test them out. But in any case, let's get down to business and start off with the paths. Now, I've done them like this, uh, path one with each row, path two there, path three there, etc. So let's go over these various paths. So kicking off with path one, eat crow, bait and switch, hazard shift, uh, schadenfreude and uh, shatter. In a nutshell, uh, the best way I could really describe this is incinerate immune, poison immune, and no buffs. Uh, champions are good. Uh, seem to be one of the solid ways to deal with this content. And as well, uh, options are either to go down the route of poison immune or incinerate immune and a science champion. But don't hit on the non-immune cycle. So basically, in a nutshell, the kind of way to explain this is that uh, these are the champions that I've kind of like recommended to go up against. And how I kind of like again kind of justify this is by this. So Human Torch, but don't hit when poison comes up because it's hazard shift. It means that it will be when you hit the champion, you will get incinerated. When you hit the champion, uh, when it's got the poison emblem, you get poisoned. So you either play into, whilst it's grey poison, right, hit in with a poison immune champion. When it's grey incinerate, hit in with an incinerate champion, because you will be immune to those effects. Even better when it's a science champion, because, hey, guess what happens if it's non-science? You get hit by a nasty amount of burst damage. So, yeah, don't do that. I was playing around with champions and decided I'll oh, use uh, Iceman. Big damage, boom, and not particularly good. So that's why I've recommended the following. So Human Torch, but hit when, um, uh, do not hit when poison is active. So the poison immunity side of things. Uh, Abomination, but, uh, you know, don't hit on incinerate. Uh, hit when it's, uh, when it's poisoned. And Red Hulk, poison immune, and also interacts with incinerate. So it's a great champion. Same with Anti Venom, who is incinerate and poison immune. Great, great champion option. I personally used Cap with a skill champion because he shrugs debuff, debuffs at the point of having uh, the shield. So the uh, when the shield pops up, um, it just absorbs it and shrugs off the debuff. So that's a good option. And as well, you can use other champions like She Hulk, but hit when it's hit, don't hit when it's incinerate. And uh, also Quake Immortal Hulk works uh, pretty well. Just don't hit on incinerates. Void don't hit on poison switch because the champion is incinerate immune. So yeah, that's a good option. It's for me personally, I just I didn't enjoy that path that much. I thought it was a bit kind of meh. Um, but let's move on to path two. On to path two now, and this is the Science Ascendancy path. By the way, the spreadsheet's updated in the link in the description. It's always updated when I do any of these new guides. We've got Superiority Top Dog, get Class Advantage, be Power Control, Drain, Burned, or Steeled, and you get Fury Passives. Nice, nice, nice. And also, whenever the Defender is afflicted with a debuff, 100% chance to inflict a non-stacking Power Burn debuff. So that's how that kind of like is uh, the way to go with with this and it's a very easy path to be honest this is probably one of the best ones there's also power shield but this one is probably one of the easier ones for me uh i think i just used that i can't remember what champion i think i even used like nick fury against some of these and some really kind of like weird kind of options spider-man 2099 i think i've used it in in this one but like other options you can use i've heard somebody say use venom hit monkey but human torch because a mole man uh any skill option any science champion it's it's a pretty easy path really i don't really know how to kind of probably explain it except for going like you know if you've got a science champion but also deal with um i'd say mordo and spider-man that's probably the only issue that you might have on that route Pfft, up to you what you what you use at nick fury as i said could be an option uh but yeah if you want to use a champion that deals around with uh, the power control elements again that, that that's down to you with it um 
I just didn't think there was too much of a problem, especially building Fury passives as easy as you do if you're power controlled. Path number three, this is your first Paradox path. Paradox buffs, in a nutshell with this one. Buffs equals get a buff, equals Paradox charges. Knockdown removes Paradox charges. Three Paradox charges, special attack um, damage, attack rating goes up, so hey. Uh, building buffs could have a benefit uh, to use some champions. Some people have said they've used the likes of Hercules, champions that well, you've got to be very careful like you can build buffs but you've got to be cycling around like um like, like knocking down the enemy to remove those charges it's a bit of a dangerous game i know some people play it i personally i'm not about that so who did i use well apocalypse of course great option because there is mars moranis black widow deadly origin and spider ham it would be Break out a nice Nick Fury for you, especially for the damage that you could do with that champion. Yeah, okay, it's not really playing around special damage, but it's just dealing with those those champion threats. But Apocalypse does the same thing. Professor X can do equal, like, great measures of damage with special attacks because it's part of the narrative of the champion. Doctor Doom, of course. Uh, there's a whole host of champions. Um, just make sure that you kind of you are careful when it's building up those buffs, building them up more frequently and throwing them. But it's a pretty doable path. It's a pretty easy, fun one when it comes to paradoxes. It's weird. I'm actually enjoying paradox path paths more than I work than I am enjoying other things. So that's weird. It's a weird feeling. Path number four. This is a fun path to a degree, and that is uh, power shield. So, power shield, power shield recharge, enhanced parry, 50 cent power gain, and spite. Now, I believe I used my most favorite champion for this was Spider Man 2099. Spider Man 2099 has a wither debuff, and that really helps into the power gain elements of this, especially because it deals with spite. Spite is really annoying. Uh, but there are other champions. If you've got power control champion options, they deal with this very nicely. And, you know, Doctor Doom is going to be the best because you're going to power control off an SP1. Any champion that goes with an SP1 rotation and power controls is great. Uh, Penny Parker. Uh, yeah, there's loads. There's loads of power control options to, uh, to mention, but it depends how you want to kind of like uh, the narrative of, of dealing with this. And um, yeah, so yeah, while blocking, you build power. You build power as well. That's something to point out. Recharge. Recharge means that you're going to be like, that. I'm just going to stay in the block, build a load of power, smack you with a special attack. That's why Spider-Man 2099 is so much fun for this path. Really highly re recommend uh, that. Could say Red Guardian for this, and uh, that's another option. I've heard, I've seen people that use Corvus Glaive because, hey, on this path, what, what do you get from it? You, you go up against a... Um, Colossus, you go, which is a, a mutant. You then go up against um, a champion that is a tech. Um, so that's that's two charges right off the bat, right there. Um, that's really kind of like it when it comes to like uh, fun elements. I mean, you get two charges, but building up and just doing SP twos without having to do anything, except for being in a block, is mighty fine and mighty tasty. Uh, I've heard other play players use stuff like a uh, wasp, kingpin, mole man. Vulture and his SP2 rotations. There's loads of options for this. It's a very doable fight. It just depends on what is going to be the most frustrating element to you that you foresee. Is it going to be a case of like suppressing power? Is it going to be a case of you um, doing just kind of like worrying about the enemy being very kind of defensive and passive? Is that going to be a problem for you? And kind of, well, just bending to that type of foreseeable issue you might see. Path number five is Moth to a Flame. I gotta be honest, it's one of the paths, like second worst path, but it's it's doable. Like I'm not overly complaining. It's just a case of like some things don't work a lot of the time in your rotation that you want to do, and you have to kind of like wait a little bit. And I don't like that because it takes away the violent speed and momentum that comes with kind of fighting. But it's doable, it's fun. Uh, in a nutshell for this, build further charges with basics and throw special attacks, but don't have zero further charges as you will get degen. Now, it's up to you how you wanna play around the narrative of this. For me, I just treat it, it's fine, but it's a longer fight to behold. On this particular path, you have Hulkbuster, Airwalker, Green Goblin, you then have Jubilee, Icarus, and White Magneto. 
On this particular path, especially for the first three, these are hashtag metal champions. So you could look to break in your red Magneto, which I did, but also I was more interested in using the likes of uh, Doctor Doom. But it's just Moth to a Flame that I just didn't really like too much. Essentially, build as much charges as possible. You might feel that you're not gaining as much power that quickly, but uh, the longer that you're in it, the longer you wait, the more damage you'll do based on special attack rotation. So maybe debuff strong champions could be some really good options for this, especially to play around that Moth to a Flame narrative. Or champions like um, Hyperion, anything that builds um, power quickly. Well, I don't think that's the case. I think these could, you're kind of like your power locked for some stuff. But um, so yeah, in any case, just like, uh, it's just, just wait out the time make sure you don't make sure you throw plenty of basic attacks don't go to zero further charges and you won't get degen you could look to play in champions that deal as degen counters like spider ham and angela or you could go a different way with it um i think mr negative could be a potential option but it's still something i've untested and as i said this will be something i throw out there and then in you know six months time redo this again so it depends on when you're seeing this video as to like the further kind of stuff but um lots of people's options champions I've, I've seen players use hercules corvus null uh i used human torch against uh, white magneto so th there's loads of champions that work for this i don't think it's too ridiculous and debuffs will still work whilst you're kind of trying to get uh special attacks um or get power to kind of throw, throw special attacks path six is paradox paradox block uh in a nutshell with this one you do a block, get a charge, knock down, removes Paradox charges. Three Paradox charges removes a glancing uh, passive, which is going to be shrugging off stuff or kind of like dealing with situations. So build those Paradoxes, try not to block too much. Well, block too much, actually block loads. Uh, but kind of like make sure you don't block to 12 because like, you know, boom, big damage for that. Uh, it's up to you how you want to play this and the champions. There's so many options for you. Any champion that uh, builds kind of like decent special attack damage, which we talked about, options being Apocalypse Professor X. I think in this path you could use Bishop quite nicely. Look at also for, for champions that will interact with building a Fury passive and increasing damage of ticks of stuff uh, with Counter-Strike. So using a Dexterity Mastery to dodge means that you get an attack rating at 10, um, 10 Furies. Uh, char uh, charges All charges are lost and the defender attacks are unblockable. If you're kind of like better with that, like I personally just, it didn't really seem like an issue. Intercepting and all just kind of wait for the um, unblockable to kind of go. So that could be an option. You could use Red Guardian, Mr. Sinister in order to deal with the unblockables. But I've got to be honest, it's nothing really to worry about. A lot of the times, because a lot of these champions are dealing around SP ones that you'll rotate around, it's just not something to worry about. I would say bring in a Do Doctor Doom or champion as a science champion, a mystic champion that deals with uh, power control and also nullification is a good option to take down Arcus because he is a pain in the butt. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, using champions that interact with special attacks, as we just mentioned a moment ago. But, you know, you could use anything. Nick Fury, Blade, Archangel, Black Widow, Clairvoyant could be good down the route and especially use utilization at the end. Mortal Abomination and building some poison damage. You, you name it. Just have another counter for something that's heal blocks when it comes to Mr. Sinister. You could be using Human Torch against that. Warlock, which I used. Um, anything. Anything for this route will do absolutely fine. It's nothing to really feel. And now for the bosses, starting off with Annihilus. Uh, Annihilus has uh, Odometer and Parry Vulnerability and Immovable Object and Boost Buff Unstoppable. Uh, the best way I can really describe this, kind of like talk about this, all the kind of ideas of counters, Doctor Doom, Clairvoyant, Magneto, because it's a hashtag metal, Sorcerer Supreme, if you start off with dealing with a slow, de the slow de debuff to deal with the Unstoppable, could be a good option. Any slow debuff champions could be advisable but nullify champions may be the good way to go the odometer so um get above 100 as enemy will go unblockable then uh but also after five hits in the combo you get a steadfast buff which allows you to block unblockables and the champion gets unstoppable you know suppress this it's up to you how you want to take on this fight as i said though the options mentioned 
the parry vulnerability, like, it's cool, and, like, that's a thing, but I kind of felt a lot of time is, like, you may want to deal with what's happening with the odometer, and also, you know, buff and stop, it just means there's one less thing to worry about, especially with the movable object being that blocking unblockables, which is uh, very, very helpful uh, in this situation. Second boss is Mojo. Mojo isn't actually as bad as you might think. So the champion does have Oscillate, No Surrender, uh, Subterfuge, and uh, Bubble Shield, right? Bubble Shield, you, unless you really worry about it, I don't think it's something you... The less you worry about, or less you focus on, uh, the, the better. And I think the main thing to focus on is that uh, the Oscillate is an annoyance because of the way that the AI will, uh, will, will kind of change. And you have to be very careful as to, like, when you throw heavy attacks whilst the enemy is in the kind of, like, shielded mode, uh, which is... Or the armor mode, which is kind of annoying. So playing against the champion... You know, the the prompts are going to be important. Try not to do the prompts. That's one thing. Keep to an SP1. Um, but the more full bars of power uh, you have and knock down the enemy will remove degen and also kind of mitigate the damage that comes in from uh, the degen side of things. So that's something to kind of like point out. And it depends how you want to work with this go against it. Um, for this particular fight interaction, uh, there's loads. I mean, for me, it was Human Torch as a Mystic Counter, but Spider-Man to deal with a D-Gen, uh, Mortal Hulk, Doctor Doom, Archangel. There's so many champions to deal with this particular situation uh, that which work really, really well. And then we lead ourselves onto Super Scroll, which I think is arguably maybe one of the easier bosses for me personally. I'm not a massive fan of Bullet Time. I know that's the thing that kind of really helps out this, but I just didn't really enjoy it. So Bullet Time, Steady, Perseverance, Feats of power and stun vulnerability. Stun vulnerability being the thing to kind of work around. So my notes for this is as follows. So bullet time uh, to stun the champion. He evades it. Get a charge. Build these up. Use the dexterity mastery. It gives you a longer passive stun, which plays into stun vulnerability. Based on the above, you'll be able to do a lot more damage than that. Uh, so you could use to take on this champion. Either play into the nodes or go a different route and play into the evade counters element. The champion does build a lot of buffs, so Ronan could be a potential option. I haven't tested it out, but it's a theory. But slow debuff champions, evade suppress champions, Nick Fury, She-Hulk could be potential options. But let's face it, at the end of the day, dealing with situations of, well, you know, suppressing buffs, which Super Scroll gets, Symbiote Supreme, Human Human Torch as being like, you know, a relatively alright option. Just go Nova, uh, Nova Flame and smack them down. Any champ really works, Immortal Hulk. It just depends on how you want to play the fight. I think I used Doctor Doom one one stage, but it's just a case of going, hey, how do I want to deal with this fight? Do I want to play into the Bullet Time node and uh, do all those, um, you know, parries and stuns which is going to cause the champion to evade each time and then it's going to build up the amount of time you can stun the enemy to do the stun vulnerability those are some options uh, for you with that but do watch out because if you don't play uh, in into it too well there is also steady steady perseverance which means that when a defender activates a special attack uh, they gain a stun immunity buff. So that creates a problem if you want to rotate around it and you might want to look into how that, um, you know, can be a potential issue for you. So, yes, caution. And that has been the Axe 7.4.4 guide. I will try and get the 7.4.5 guide out very, very soon. Uh, but there is new content being dropped in the game and it's normally what I cover here on the channel. So I will come back to this as soon as I possibly can, especially because I need to get... Uh, this 100%ed up to 7.4.5 and then do the initial completion of 7.4.6 uh, before I uh, get those 10,000 units or around about that time we get 10,000 units. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.